Hey everyone, this is uh, the video for Tuesday. Remember, Monday we just had a Zoom session. I hope you all saw the calendar I posted on Sunday to kind of give you an idea of what's going to be happening for this week. Now, these worksheets will be posted on the Google you know, Classroom. They'll be going to be there if you want to print them at home. Or you can always copy them into a separate piece of paper. It's The option is yours. Now, for Tuesday, we're just going to focus on this page right here, page one. And for Wednesday, we're going to focus on the second page, okay? Now, this is basically the same stuff I went over last week. It's just more detailed and just more work, okay? The notes had four or five prompts that I went very specific. This is kind of like we're finishing off this section and we're gonna move on to the next one, okay? Completing the square can be complicated, so if you're stuck when you're watching this video, make sure you're watching last videos too. Make sure you're reading the Google post on Google Classroom. I'm mentioning I'm not accepting late work. If whether it's from March or April, that work is done. Grades are already you know, submitted and, and whatnot. We're moving on to the next section, which means I'm not accepting late work. Friday was an easy day. I did not assign extra work. It was about you getting work done. I've had only on Monday section yesterday, I only had one person sign in, uh, two, sorry, two students sign in to the, Google, um, to the Zoom session and ask for help. That means the rest of you, the 148 of you, must be pretty good. Now, the Zoom is for me to help you better understand what I'm asking for, and it's available for you to ask questions. You know, if you're stuck, if you're having trouble with the internet, having trouble with your emails, that's what those Zoom sessions are for. Your parents can join the Zoom sessions as well, and that's not an issue. The issue is if you have questions and you're not signing in to ask, that's the biggest issue right there. So only you can actually fix that issue. Now, completing the square, remember when we have a coefficient of one right here, it's gonna be nice and easy. Because all we're really looking for is this box right here. And we want that C value, that's the main thing. We already know what the first box is, that's just Z2. And remember, in order to find these two right here, you grab this middle portion, divided by two, two divided by two is one. So this is one Z, and this is also one Z. Now what we're gonna do here, we're gonna start looking at um, getting the greatest common factor between these two, which is Z, because that's one Z and this is Z2. Well, the only things they have in common is Z. The only things they have in common here are also Z. And the only possible way to get the um, Z times what gives us one Z, well, that has to be one. Z times what gives us one Z, that has to be one. And one times one is one, which means that C has to equal one. Notice how there's no equal sign, so we don't have to worry about adding and subtracting. It's just finding the value for C. I'm gonna do this one right here as well. Make our square. Put our C value here, and two, and power two. We get half of the 26, which is 13, N. And then we plug this one in over here as well, 13 N. Since they're the same, I already know that to, the only possible way to get N squared is for this to be N. This has to be N. And since it's a square, the number should be the same. So now the biggest question is, what's 13 times 13? Well, that's gonna be 169. And there we go. We found our C. When you're doing your work, make sure you include the box. All you really have to do is cut the middle portion in half, the middle part of the trinomial. Cut in half, plug into your values here, and that's basically gonna tell you what your sides are. Now, that these didn't have the equal sign, but these do, which are gonna make them trickier. And we're only focusing with the leading coefficient of one, which makes the work a lot easier. So we make our box. Now, we are ignoring the seven for now. It doesn't exist. We're looking for C. So we're gonna say M squared. Half of six is three. So this is three M, three M. And this already tells you basically what your sides are. This is M, M, three, three. Three and three, well, if you multiply, you get nine. So our 
C right here is none. So we're gonna here we're gonna have to do m squared plus six m plus nine equals. We have to add a nine to both sides to balance it out. So seven plus nine is sixteen. And since we want the perfect square of this, which is this part here, this is gonna turn into m plus three squared equals sixteen. Notice how it says round to the nearest hundreds. We're not worrying about that part right now. We're looking for exact values, okay? Now, it says that because on some of them, they're not easy to cut in half, and we'll see those very soon. So, on this one right here, this is a perfect example. If I do number eight, I do my box, z squared, I know I'm looking for c, I don't know what it is, now the, here's the problem, half of 9, it's not an even number, half of 9 is 4.5, or we can just write it as 9 over 2. I'm going to prefer 9 over 2 because it's easier to do. So I'm going to say 9 over 2 z, 9 over 2 z, I already know my values just like the one previous, z, z, this is 9 over 2, 9 over 2, so c once we multiply it, 9 times 9 is 81, 2 times 2 is 4, that's our C value, 81 over 4. So I know once I do my perfect square, I just care about this part right here, it's going to be Z plus 9 over 2 squared. Now since I added this part 81 over 4 to the left side, make sure you look at the notes from last week if you're confused right now, since I added it to this side, I have to add it to this side as well, which is 81 over 4. So I'm going to have z plus 9 over 2 squared equals, now I need to have a common denominator, so I have to have a 4 on the bottom, multiply the top by 4, which is going to be 144. So we add 144 plus 81 over 4, and that's going to give us 225 over 4. And that's our perfect answer right there. Now, notice on this one, we have a negative 10. We're gonna skip down to number 12, we're skipping 10. Because I, this one's a little bit more complicated. Here's what you do. This 10, just move it to the other side. Get the opposite of it and get rid of it. And then what we do is, we make our box. We're looking for C, B squared, Half of negative 5 is negative 5 over 2. Negative 5 over 2. This is a B, that's a B. So I know when I do my perfect square, that's going to be B minus 5 over 2 squared. Now, negative and negative, right? That can be tricky. Because we want this C, we've got to find it. But we know they're both negatives. Well, if these two are negatives, that means that C is going to be positive. So right here, we're going to add to both sides 5 over 2 times 5 over 2. That's going to be, and we can just leave it as 25 over 4. So we add a, we add a 10, and then we say 25 over 4. I want common denominator, so I make this a 40 over 4. And this is going to turn 65 over 4. And that's the final answer for that one. Solve each equation by completing the square. If necessary, run to the nearest hundreds. This is exactly the, one, the same one as the previous one. Same work. We can make it easier for us, too. Notice this one right here. This is our going to be our first, the only one I'm going to do for this one right here. So for this one. Notice how we have a perfect square in our first box, which is 4C2. Half of 8, half of negative 8 is negative 4C, negative 4C. Now, this has to be a perfect square. So this is going to be 2C, and this is going to be 2C, because it's going to, I know the 2 parts have to be exactly the same. 
So they have to look exactly the same. 2c times what gives us negative 2c? That's negative 2. That's negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So we're going to add 4 to both sides. 1 plus 4 is 5. So here we're going to have 2c minus 2 equals 5. If you're watching this and you're completely stuck, I hope you sign into the Wednesday Zoom session so I can help you out. Because if you're getting stuck here in mastering, they expect you to be doing the work right now as well. There's no excuses of why you're not able to at least copy down the work and give it a good attempt, okay? Some of you are still emailing me. Um, please stop emailing me at 1 a.m., please. I would appreciate that. <laughs> I want to get some sleep, okay? Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon for the next video.